today I'm showing you what real LLM work looks like on the M4 Pro Mac Mini with just 24 gig of RAM of unified memory. That's right, on the Mac Mini. This is the cheapest Mac you can buy, right? But don't be fooled by the price and kind of the size of these bad boys. As you have seen previously here, this machine is extremely capable, even at the base model version as well. Today we'll be using the M4 Pro chip, so a little bit more advanced, but it is the entry level model of that configuration too, like I said, with only 24 gig of RAM. And listen, before we crack on, I just wanted to say a massive thank you to all of you, literally hundreds of you who requested this video and a massive apology as well, because it's been a few months, uh, but it took me a long time because it is a tricky video to produce. But I wanted to make sure that it wasn't just uh, me chatting about it. I wanted to show you relevant tests, tests that are meaningful to you. Now, when I say real LLM work, what do I mean? Two things that matter for day-to-day -day work, right? Throughput and retrieval. Throughput, basically, you know, how can you handle multiple requests at once without choking? And retrieval is you build your own library and you get the machine to answer questions based on your own material instead of either guessing or going to the internet for the answers. So we'll do a quick concurrency burst as well to prove that you can serve multiple chats at once. Then we'll do some local retrieval augmented generation or RAG for sure. That demo kind of answers questions based on my own script. No gimmicks, it's literally my own words. And there's some, some bombshells in there as well. Some housekeeping stuff, the models I'm using primarily is gonna be the Lama 3.18 B. So quite a small model but for quality and for this test, it wouldn't work if it was too big because it needs more memory, right? And where relevant, I will flash up a smaller model as well, just briefly to show you the speed differences and use my M1 Max MacBook Pro as well for comparison. Right, on with the first test. This is the concurrency, the throughput test. This isn't a synthetic benchmark, by the way. It's literally a very simple, how fast can the Mac mini push tokens out. Right, they've done it again. I should be getting commission from Apple. Honestly, I don't usually sing praises uh, for Apple stuff, but you can't deny it with, when it comes to the Mac minis, it's just incredible. I'm using Olama's local API here so we can get actual numbers from the model itself, not just a stopwatch on the, on the terminal itself. And the prompt is fixed at 120 predicted tokens so that we, you know, we kind of control and we measure the same length every time. On the M4, Pro Mac Mini. On the M4 Pro Mac Mini, all I do is I run the API call and then I pull the metrics out of the JSON file that it returns. The important fields here are the eval count. You probably know this already, but for those who don't know, that's where, you know, that's how many tokens are generated and eval duration uh, in time, which is milliseconds. Now, from there, it's just tokens divided by the time it took to get our speed. <laughs> and this is where it gets crazy. The Mac Mini result is 1,234 tokens in about 5.7 seconds, 6 seconds, which works out about 218 tokens per second. <laughs> yes. All local as well, right? There's no internet latency, no API costs. That's all on the machine. If you're not impressed, and I was like, okay, this is good, but what does that mean? How does that compare with other stuff? So I run the exact same model, exact same prompt length, exact same command on everything, on my M1 Max, MacBook Pro here, with 64 gig of RAM, it's pretty much maxed out in, in terms of specs. This one managed 85 tokens in just under two seconds, about 48 tokens per second. Honestly, even though the M1 Max MacBook Pro has three times more memory, the M4 Pro Mac Mini has that newer M4 architecture. And even with just a much smaller, you know, 24 gig of RAM, it's absolutely chewing through this workload more than like four times faster. That's crazy. That's just a single prompt baseline. And it was very similar when I did a, a five prompt at the same time. It maintained the same performance throughout on the M4 Pro Mac Mini. Uh, on the fifth uh, sort of prompt, it did oscillate a little bit, but not by much. On the M1 Max MacBook Pro, you can see that the memory is getting a little bit, you know, there's a little bit of a, a spike, but nothing crazy like it was showing on the M4 Pro. Of course, you know, there's a lot more memory, so the memory pressure isn't doing much. And in terms of processing speed, it maintained consistency as well at 48 tokens per second, even when it was doing five at the time. Honestly, that's super impressive, but let's go through more tests. Cool. Next test is the local retrieval augmented generation, RAG for short. 
I've loaded some old scripts, you know, of my own videos. They're all Apple related, so I kind of kept it at least, you know, relevant because it's you know, otherwise it's going to be a mess to to ask relevant questions. But those questions I will ask of the model are fairly complex, but the model has to do some work for it. We're going to push it by asking not just to show me the responses, but with brief citations as well and references to my own notes. I wanted to quote, you know, what file name he used. So we know it's not just making stuff up, it's using my own words, not the internet. Talking of which, and before I show you the answers, a quick shout out about today's sponsors, Recall. It's an AI powered knowledge base engine, very relevant to today's video, right? That automatically organizes everything I save, YouTube videos, PDFs, podcasts, Google Docs, articles, the lot. It gives me one click summaries, it lets me chat with that content that I created. The beauty is, you know, it's, it's for me, it's my own thing, and I can save things to read later so I don't lose it. Let me show you this. Here's all my content, all neatly organized in this knowledge base. Doesn't that look awesome, by the way, the, the graphics here? And it's superb for finding and connecting all my thoughts, which, to be honest, used to be a challenge before this. It's, it's a bit of a mess. I have so many apps for my scripts, research, note-taking, iOS, Android, <laughs> Mac, Windows, and having recall now is literally like a breath of fresh air for me. What's new and brilliant is the ability to chat across everything that I saved. Instead of digging through the notes and searching for history and bookmarks as well, my gosh, hundreds of bookmarks, I just ask recall now and I get an answer sourced from my library instantly. And that's the key, the content is curated for you. I'm not chatting with the entire internet, I'm chatting with the stuff that I've chosen to, to keep and trust. There's also advanced search, which is awesome, and an augmented browser as well, which is so handy. Check this out. It basically serves these connections to things that I've saved before. It could have been like six months ago. All these connections in here as I'm reading this article, it's awesome to see that. And that bit is local first as well on my machine. I've been so impressed by Recall. Honestly, they're constantly bringing new features as well and chatting to them. They show me how cool it is that they're actually listening to their customers to bring all these new features that we're seeing now. It's awesome to see that. And here's one of my favorite features. When you're watching a YouTube video, you can quickly get a summarized view or a detailed summary as well if you want. But you might say, actually, Alex, YouTube already does that. Well, here's the power of Recall. Those links are now in your knowledge base so that in future when you watch something related, those connections are built. It's so powerful, honestly, it's really, really good. And the great news for you is that with my code Alex25, you get 25% off. That is one of the biggest discounts I've seen in this space. It's valid until the 1st of September, so you still have some time. I'll leave my link down below so you can try it, of course. If you're watching this from a TV, scan the QR code here. But if you're wondering what it supports, it supports YouTube, long and short videos, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, PDF, up to 100 megs as well, Google Docs, Slides, regular web articles as well, and even TikTok. And you can bulk import bookmarks or pocket saves as well to get started quickly. Absolute godsend. Find it at getrecall.ai. Awesome tool, but let's do something cool ourselves now with the retrieval augmented generation answer. First thing is, let's check over how the local model here answered our questions about my videos and see if he made stuff up or is he actually accurate. Now, here's another interesting part. I mean, it's a bit of a theme now with the Mac Mini. I moved desks, but it is still the Mac Mini, the M4 Pro. Uh, despite having less than half the memory, the M4 Pro Mac Mini here absolutely smashes my M1 Max MacBook Pro with 64 gig of RAM in this local rag test. Now, on the Mac Mini, we're seeing a total pipeline time of 27.6 seconds compared to 39 seconds on the MacBook Pro. I'm still shocked. That is exactly why we're doing this test, right? To show how a local rack setup on the Mac Mini can eliminate the slow manual process of sometimes having to scroll through things. And this just gives you a very quick private answers as well in the exact context that you care about for your projects or research. And that can become so powerful, especially if you don't wanna be sending stuff to the cloud or if you, where you work might not wanna do this and you just wanna do a quick AI test based on you know a storage of documentation. This is so powerful and doesn't cost a lot of money, right? Despite this being a budget-friendly machine, this test kind of shows that you can go beyond the typical browsing and social media use, right? If you're a student, an editor, a researcher, a creator even, using something like this saves real time. But this is also gonna be extremely useful in industries that are more sort of cautious with public AI tools or you know, sending stuff to the cloud. 
you can scale this quite easily and keep it private to that organization. And with a bit more grunting memory and processing power, you can have an incredible solution here. I've seen people sort of kind of joining two, three, four, five Mac Minis and making a little bit of a cluster. Maybe I'll do that as well. But that's the thing about the Mac Mini. You remember how crazy we went with you know, testing AAA games, 3D rendering, video editing, and even music production as well. It, it took a lot, like literally like hundreds of tracks and lots of plugins to break the Mac Mini. Well, we can add LLM work to that list now, but there are some limits. More on that shortly. Now, as a bonus, we're gonna do a multimodal test here. In this test, I wanted to see how a visual language model could help me plan shots based on a single frame. I took a still from my footage, like a, an old photo, and fed it into the local VLM. No cloud services, again, no internet calls, literally everything local. The model processed the image pretty quickly and returned this structured storyboard. Really neat thing to do. There's a shot list as well, the key objects all detected, suggested captions, which is awesome, and even a proposed color palette. Watching you break down a single image into a practical, usable plan not only shows how these tools can accelerate creative workflows, in my case, so being a little bit selfish here and coming up with something that will help me, but it keeps everything private and offline, but also sort of underscores again the raw power of the M4 Pro Mac Mini. Handling a multimodal model locally, parsing image data, generating structured outputs, and suggesting creative directions as well in seconds, it highlights that, you know, the power of the CPU and GPU here, the memory bandwidth as well, of course, even though I've only got 24 gig here. In tech, we see products sometimes that, you know, kind of, they're cool and they're, they're funky or whatever. But with the Mac Mini, I don't know, it's very tangible, right? These examples I'm showing you here, managing complex AI workloads, not just language, but vision as well, all without relying on the cloud, just proves to me that this machine can perform like a, a high-end AI workstation, which brings me neatly to why fine-tuning an LLM was a bit of a challenge. Guys, I tried, you know, with 24 gig of unified memory, it was just more hassle than what it's worth for just a quick, reliable demo. I even tried on my machine with 64 gig of RAM, my M1 Max MacBook Pro. It was a challenge on that as well, and we kept crashing because really to get something meaningful um, going in, in this sort of fine-tuning space, you do need, I'd say, at least 96 gig of RAM. Sure, we can really try smaller models and, and kind of show that it is possible, but I don't know, what we tried today here already proves some, you know, something even better. But I really wanted to stretch and see you know, what the Mac Mini's limits are. And well, it looks like for a proper LLM fine-tuning setup, you do need to get a lot more memory. Yes, LoRa is possible, but the training footprint and time make it an absolute pain in the backside on this configuration. For most workflows, RAG and concurrency, like I showed today, absolutely, that's what makes the Mac Mini sort of shine, but I'm not giving up. I am ordering a beefed up Mac Mini to see if we can really push it with fine tuning, and I will do a dedicated fine tuning episode as well. Please do tell me if there are any other use cases that you like, that you would actually benefit from seeing, and I'll make sure to plan that properly for you. For example, if you've got a strong use case where adaptation truly beats retrieval, like we tried here today, say like a, a signature tone or a rigid output format, just let me know here in the comments and I'll plan that in the fine tuning episode for sure. Now you might say, so what? Well, the M4 Pro Mac Mini can run capable chat models locally. We kind of knew that before, but it handles concurrent requests without stuttering and answers questions from your own files. I can't stress how, how cool that is. And as you've seen, how well it performed against a much more expensive machine. That's really useful AI on a small desktop, predictable, private, genuinely fast for day-to-day -day work. And there are some fancy ways of grouping multiple Mac Minis together in a cluster and utilize those resources as one machine for AI work, but that's another video. And now is your turn. You know, what should I push next? Bigger context, code assist maybe, something like that? Or do you really want that full fine-tuning episode with a beef tap Mac Mini? Drop me a comment, and if this helped, it would be awesome if you subscribed, and I hope to see you soon. Cheers.